Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, a so called black man. Itching ears and fables. Itching ears and fables. Be aware. This is out of the book of Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, and we're going to start at, at the uh, verse, well, we're going to start at verse number five. And it reads, thus saith Yahweh, cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his own, and whose heart departed from Yahweh. And that's pretty much it. Cursed be the man, you know, if you... Believe in everything that you hear from whoever you're going to for advice uh, pertaining to this word, and they're not backing it up with scriptures, and you putting your complete trust in what they say, curse be you. Because, you know, you have servants that's out here that's putting things into perspective where you can get a better understanding where you don't have to rely on one person for your salvation you know back like you like back like you had to back in the days when you used to go to church and you you know hold on to every word that the preacher told you you believed everything that he said you didn't go and look at it you didn't go and look it up you didn't you know do your homework your research you just trusted in him well, it says, thus saith Yahweh, cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departed from Yahweh. You know, so now there's no excuse with the word, with the word going out uh, on high, you know, and these prophecies being fulfilled that we waking up in these last days. There's no excuse for you not to know what's going on other than you just like the dark. You know, you like to stay in the dark. So it says, no, uh, verse 6, For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabit it. So, you know, <laughs> by you putting your trust in this man, now you in the you, you you in a sticky, you know, you in a sticky situation, you know, you have no shade, you out there in the open, you in the hot, the desert, you know, you subject to all type of uh, elements, man, the sun, you know, dry air, you know, you name it, no water, you know, verse seven, blessed is the man that trusts in Yahweh. And whose hope Yahweh is, you know. So for you who do your research and do your homework diligently, blesses you because you know that these scriptures are what's you know gonna keep you, especially in these end, in the, especially in these end times. So it says, "Blesses the man that trusteth in Yahweh, and whose help and whose hope Yahweh is." For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh. But her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. So this person is going to be taken care of, you know. Leaves going to be growing seeds gonna be yielding you know and you're not gonna have to worry about the heat man the sun and all the dryness and all that stuff because you put your trust in your how you didn't put your trust in a man because it tells us that in jeremiah the what let's go there the ninth chapter actually it says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it? So when you put your trust in a man, you know, his heart, his mind is deceitful because nine out of ten times 
he has what's in his best interest. You know, he's not looking out for you. He's looking out for himself. So it says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Here it is. Verse 10. I yet how I search of the heart. I try to reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So Yahweh knows the heart and he knows that if it was left up to man and his devices, that man would just be completely wicked. So we need some type of discipline and instructions. And this is what the word was given to us for. You know, it was given to us for discipline, instructions, and to save us from our own wicked heart, our own wicked mind. You know, and it tells us that in 2 Timothy 3.16. Let's go there. All right, this is the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 16. And it says, and it reads, All scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. See, this is, this is what the word is, is meant to be used for, you know? It helps us from ourselves because left out to defend for ourselves, we have no chance. We'll go off into sin. We'll displease our power, Yahweh, and then have to be punished, you know. But now knowing who we are and coming into these last days and knowing what the Most High Yahweh requires of us, we know that through these, through these words, through these instructions, you know, how we ought to conduct ourselves so one more time it reads all scriptures is given by inspiration of the most high and is profitable good for doctrine reproof correction for instruction in righteousness so this is this is the purpose of these scriptures you know so when it says curse be the man who put his trust in man that's because man above all is what wickedly deceitful you know but through these scriptures you know we can filter out and see what's good and what's not because we have a measuring tool you know and it tells us that all scriptures well, let's go ahead and get that This is in Psalm 68, and we're going to go down to verse 11, and it reads, The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. See? The Lord gave the word to his prophets, you know, and great was the company that, and great was the company of those that published it. You know, these scriptures and books were published through the inspiration that we read earlier that was given for what? Reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. It was inspired. It was given to by the, by the by Yahweh. It says the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. And we see through each book, each prophet, whether it's Jeremiah, Daniel, Malachi, Nehemiah, you know, and so on and so on. This is the great company of those that published it, you know, and man, I try to tell you <laughs> that you don't need to what use the word because before the word, how did people go about receiving the word? And they don't understand the most high was dealing with these prophets directly. Now he's not dealing with us for our sins. He gave us his word so that we can turn back from our sins and repent so he can deal with us. So it says the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. And we just named a few that published some of these great words that was given by the most high. So you see, curse be the man that put his trust in man because that man will lead you astray. He will give you all types of false doctrines because in his heart, his mind, he believes 
that he's himself a God and he's telling you what he believes according to his heart and his mind that is, you know, true. But as we already read in Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, the 10th verse, the most high Yahweh try, try up the reins of man's heart, you know, because man will tell you that let's give an example. Well, not only an example, but a living, you know, a living example, living proof that Yahweh Shai or who the word really calls Jesus was born on December the 25th, which is they call it Christmas, which the scriptures cannot validate that or back that up. And in essence, it contradicts that, you know, it tells you that he was born in a time where, you know, it wasn't cold outside. And another another living example is man to tell you that Yahweh Shah, who the word really calls Jesus, rose, you know, died on Good Friday and rose on Sunday. Where in the scriptures it contradicts that, contradicts that and tells you that he would be in the belly uh for three days, you know, and when you count Friday to Sunday, no matter how you count that, you can only get two days. But then, you know, the, the man who trusted in the man, the, your, your preacher or your pastor, whoever, I tell you, don't worry about that. God can do all type of miracles. You see, and this is the nonsense that they feed to you to, you know, validate they <laughs> validate their wicked mind, their wicked heart. So, uh, John, the fifth chapter, tells us, let's go down there to it, verse 39, let's read that. John chapter 5 and 39 says, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. You see? It tells us to search the scriptures. In contrast to what your pastors or your preachers might teach you, that you don't need to search the scriptures. Trust in your own heart. <laughs> because they quick to say, or they are use an incident like, who... Where did the prophets before uh, time get they, uh, you know, material from? You know, this is the this is the foolishness and the nonsense that they come up with to, you know, try to validate their doctrine or their ideologies. You know, that's why it tells us in Second Timothy. Let's go there. The fourth chapter. And let's jump down to three. And it goes and reads. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. You see, and this is the time, you know, that they will not endure sound doctrine. They want to they want to hear what makes them feel, you know, what makes them feel good. They want to have itching ears and they want to be turned into fables, you know, because they can see having Easter a time to come with your family, get all dressed up, you know, drink excessively you know and do all type of things that's contradicted to what the word says man well when you search these scriptures you find out and you know that you can't do any of this see this word this truth is about humbling yourself you got to put this word before your own self 
And that's hard for a lot of people, man, because this society has built up a society full of, you know, me first type of people, individuals. So it says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears because they want to hear something that goes along with what they got planned. They don't want to hear nothing that, you know, contradicts what they're doing because then they have to look in the mirror and, and examine themselves. And it says, and they should turn away their ears from the truth. And that's exactly why. And shall be turned into fables. Oh, Jesus was <laughs> Jesus was born from a virgin, you know, immaculate, uh, immaculate inception. He didn't need a he didn't need a a, a a man. Virgin Mary got pregnant by the Holy Ghost. This is this is the type of nonsense you subject yourself to, especially when you don't search the scriptures. You know, you get what? You get itching ears and you get fables. You know, and it, tell, and it tells us exactly what we ought to do, man, because you got a lot of individuals out here that in some way, shape or fashion, that's denying, you know, that Yahweh Shai came in the flesh. And it tells us to test the spirits. Let's go there. First John chapter 4. And let's read verse 1. Belo beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they whether they are of the most high. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And it tells us that in uh, Colossians 2 and 8. We're going to come back here. Colossians 2, 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world, and not, a, and not after Yahweh Shai. So the rudiments of this world I'll tell you everything in opposition of what the word tells you. And sometimes they'll get so close to what the word tells you that the lines are blurry and you can't really tell which is which. You know? And that's why you need, you know, someone to show you and then you go search the scriptures and do your work diligently and you'll see through the scriptures that who has sound doctrine and who has fables or itching ears? So let's read that one more time. It says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Yahweh Christ, because you have the doctrine of fallen angels. Where they say that the angels fell from heaven and they came down to earth <laughs> and impregnated uh, women, you know? These are, these are what? Vain deceit, philosophies, and traditions after man because you can't find anything in the Bible that substantiate that, you know? So back to testing the spirits. First John 4 and uh, verse 1, and it reads, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they of whether they are of the most high, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of the most high. Every spirit that confesses that Yahweh Shai Hamashiach is coming in the flesh is of the most high. Right. So if you got some doctrine that's preaching and telling you that Yahweh Shai or who the world calls Jesus is entered into this world other than anything by a male and a female having sex, you know that spirit ain't right. You might want to do your research and homework a little bit more on that person. And if you have someone that's denying the names after knowing the names, 
you know, for whatever reason. You might want to examine yourself and that person and try the spirit and see exactly what's going on. Because like we read earlier in 2 Timothy, the uh, third chapter, the 16th verse, it tells us the, what the word is for. Reproof, correction, for instruction and in righteousness. You know? So you got to try the spirit. You got to test these spirits, man. You know, I understand you want to trust in man, but it tells us curse be the man that put his trust in man. You know, you feel like this person has, you know, somewhat the truth because he's given us identity. He's given us back. That individual is giving us back our identity. We finding out who we are on a mass scale. And that person sounds like, you know, he has sound doctrine. But he's denying, he's denying Yahweh Shai. Either by not A, giving it, giving him full credit that he came in the flesh from a man and a female, or B, not giving you the name, you know, and it goes on and on. The doctrine doesn't add up. They might give you the name, but then the doctrine that they pushing to go along with Yahweh Shai. Isn't substantial, isn't substantial enough for you to believe that this person is Yahweh Shai. Because they might as well just say that this person is, you know, Christ or Jesus. And that's a tight rope to walk because we understand our oppressors gave us the name Jesus with false doctrines attached to that name. And most people relate to Jesus than Yahweh Shai because they don't want to accept Yahweh Shai. They much rather accept Jesus because that's all they know. Sweet Jesus. And they see it in the scriptures and they say, we don't see the word Yahweh Shai. Well, we giving you his name in the Hebrew. And if you go look up that name Joshua, then you'll see it's pronounced in the Hebrew, Yahweh Shai. And when you look up uh, Jesus in the Greek, it's a trans, uh, transliteration of Jesus. And then you have some people that use the doctrine that Hey, Zeus is talking about a God, which is just a transliteration of Joshua. The closest you're going to get from translating the words, the letters, Joshua into Jesus in the Greek, which is Hey, Zeus, which is salvation. He is salvation, which is Joshua. And we know in the Hebrew that is Yahweh Shai. And it tells us that in Ecclesiasticus, that the words utter in Hebrew do not have the same effect utter in another language. So we give you the Hebrew name because it has more power behind its, you know, its meaning than other languages, whether it's Greek, you know, English, or what it, whatever it be. We giving you the name. You should know these names. These are the names you need to know for salvation and to call on. So we pushing the Yahweh shot. While others are saying Jesus, they're not giving you complete access, man, because you should know that Yahweh shot is not going to tell you to break the commandments. He's not going to say you can eat pork. He's not going to say you can, you know, have sex with your neighbor's wife have sex on the Sabbath. You know, he's not pushing these other doctrines. But you can get by with that when you say Jesus because the world acknowledges and knows that Jesus is all loving. He forgives everything. He forgives everybody. So that's why you have to be careful you know, of putting your trust in man because cursed be the man who puts his trust in man. 
And the heart is wicked and deceitful above all things. Who can know it? Only Yahweh shy. Because he tried the reins of man. So if you deny the flesh, that Yahweh shy came in the flesh, whether it's by sex from a male and a female, or whether you denying the name, knowing what's behind the name, let's go on and read. What does it say? Pick up on verse number. You know what? Let's start from the top. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of the most high, because many false prophets are going out into the world. Two, hereby know ye the spirit of the most high. Every spirit that confesseth that Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach is come in the flesh is of the most high. Three, and every spirit that confesseth not that Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach is come in the flesh of, is Slaki, let's take that from the top of verse 3. And every spirit that confesseth not that Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach is come in the flesh is not of the most high. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is is it in the world? So the spirit of the Antichrist is already in is in the world because it's denying the uh, it's denying the flesh of Yahweh Shahul Mashiach. And some of us who perceive to have the truth is actually in the spirit of the Antichrist because we deny the fact that his name is Yahweh Shai. We won't use it for whatever purposes that may be, or we'll get around the fact that he was born both of male and female flesh and only say that he was born of female flesh and was impregnated by a, by a spirit which can't be backed up in sound doctrine but is yet a, a fact of itching ears and fables you know we we deny Yahweh Shai so we'll be considered antichrist in the spirit you know, so you have to know these things. Repent from what you've been learned and taught. Turn back to this truth, this word, man. Call on the name of Yahweh, which is the Father, Bahashem, which is in the name, Yahweh Shai, which is the Son, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Because you can't go straight to the Father on your own. You have to have access, and that's through the name. And you have to know the name to have access, and that's Yahweh Shah. You know? So it tells us, let's go there. In Jeremiah, the ninth chapter, in the 25th verse. It says, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised. So we know there's a day that's going to come where the circumcised, which is the Israelites, will be punished with the uncircumcised, which is the heathens, you know? And we know that day is coming, and it's the judgment, you know? And we know here in Babylon, America, that it's going to be a whole bunch of Israelites, particularly the two-thirds that's going to be judged with the other heathens, you know, for all their wickedness, you know, especially those who knew, you know, who knew better, but just decided that <laughs> they weren't going to acquiesce because they had sound doctrine in their head, in their mind, and they couldn't be far from the truth. It was itching ears and fables. And it reads 26. Egypt and Judah and Edom and the children of Ammon and Moab and the and all and all that are in the utmost corners that dwell in the wilderness. For all these nations are uncircumcised and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in the heart. You see? So Israel is uncircumcised in the heart, while all these other nations are uncircumcised overall. Because Israel 
can be circumcised in the heart and the mind through these words, through these scriptures. But since they chose not to, go hand joined in hand, the wicked will not go unpunished. They have to be punished with the uncircumcised. They're going to be heaped up in the same category as the uncircumcised. That's why I read, that's why I read in 25, behold, the days come, see if you howl that I will punish them which are un, which are circumcised, which is who? The Israelites. With the uncircumcised, which is who? The other nations. But we see in the spirit, in the heart, that Israel is looked at as uncircumcised. You know? So if you don't repent and turn from your wicked ways, you know, you're going to be looked at as uncircumcised and you're going to receive the same punishment. Especially here in Babylon. You know, we already know, pursuing the Zechariah, that two thirds are going to be cut off in the land. You know? So, you know, repent, turn back from your ways while you still have, you know, while you still have time and call on the right names, man. And don't Deny you how we're shy in the flesh. You know? So we're going to go ahead and close out in First Peter and we're going to take it from there. This is First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8 and it reads, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You know, and if he, if he can coerce these other groups you know whether it's whether they're Israelites or not to have you to call on other names other than the correct name willingly and you knowing it but because that name that they give you is tied to a more sensitive you know doctrine then by all means necessary will they produce groups and individuals that push that doctrine. Because you got to remember, two thirds of us are going to, uh, you know, perish. And yes, that includes those of us who know, you know. Like I said, that includes those of us who know who we are. But what? We deny Yahweh Shai in the flesh. We don't call on his name. We don't believe in his doctrine. Because for whatever reason it be, maybe we think it's too harsh or it can't be true. You know, that what? That we are rather call on another another uh another Jesus. You no. Know? You don't want you don't want you don't want to search the scriptures. You you rather have itching ears and listen to fables because it suits your agenda. That's too harsh or whatever it may be. I'd rather stick to calling on Jesus or whatever name outside of Yahweh shot. You know, but you have to be sober and vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, he walk up about seeking whom he may devour. And having other groups or other individuals pushing out, you know, the name outside of Yahweh Shai, it's A OK with them because they know that there's no power in that name. You know, do some form of shit through some form, shape, or fashion, it doesn't align with the name of Yahweh Shah. And for those of us who know Yahweh Shah and pushing the Yahweh Shah name, who doctrine doesn't align with Yahweh Shah, who might who may have the you know the true name, but the doctrine doesn't align with you know the teachings of Yahweh Shah, then he's okay with that. You see, that's why you have to be sober and you have to be vigilant.
because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he made a vow. So you have to have the names and the doctrine that go along with it, you know, and you have to search the scriptures. Other than that, you're not going to know. You know, you're going to be subject to having itching ears and, and believing in fables and putting your trust in man. And it tells you, curse be the man that trusts in man. You know, so there's plenty of, you know, videos and, you know, servants that's going out on the highway and hedges, putting out, you know, the word, giving you some you know, research that you can look up and search the scriptures and see whether or not everything lines up that that's the truth. <coughs> you know, and you don't have to suck and guess. You know, so you have to be led by the spirit. And ultimately, you have to be part of the elect in the new world number. And you just waiting to be waked up, you know, because a lot of us ain't going to get it on this side. We're going to have to come back in the kingdom, you know. So it's basically waking up the valley of the dry bones, man, you know, because some of us won't get it. And that's by design. We have been, you know, ordained for judgment and that's our lot you know so it's not because we don't want to get it it's because the spirit won't give it to us you know so if you get it bless are ye who eyes have seen and ears have heard you know because you received it and you did with it what you what you needed to you repent it you turn back from your ways you know the name to call on the names to call on you know, and it's through your works that, you, you, you know, you're going to be delivered and not just your works, but your faith and having the name to and having the names to call on. You know, so you have to be sober and you have to be vigilant in these last days, man, because there's no excuse why you shouldn't know exactly what's going on outside of, you know, you're just too busy and you don't have time. You know, so we're going to read it one more time. We're going to close out after that. It reads, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walk up about seeking whom he may devour. You know, so with that being said, stay strong, stay in the faith. We are almost home. Shalom.